Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. What are we doing today? Do you remember the video from earlier this year on that brass coin? That was actually a video that the company Tools Today uh, hired us to make. And that's what we're going to do today is another video for them. That video was really cool because of the up close detail of that little brass coin. It was really cool. Today, we're going to machine some 4140. It sort of looks like a gas cap, but it's a logoed part for them. And I think the takeaways are really in the HSM cam side. We'll throw in some machining footage as well. But uh, Tools Today is a great company. We've actually done a number of videos for them showing off their tools. Their little sales pitch is really good customer service, really fast shipping, high quality tools, you know, a really big selection. They ship worldwide. Uh, but that's not the point. The point is let's learn some, I think, some pretty cool HSM tricks that will also be applicable uh, for Fusion. So let's dive in. Even though this isn't a job shop job in the sense that the final product isn't a batch of machined parts per se, it is a great example. So here we've got our model in SolidWorks and let me know if you guys are interested. One of the things I thought about doing was redoing this video for Fusion 360 as well. The cam will actually be pretty similar because Fusion 360 uses HSM cam, but it's a really easy to make parts like this that look sort of complicated. The customer was fine with the part being 2.95 inches. So the first thing we're going to do is a 2D contour to clean up the outside of that 4140 raw material. We're going to run that with this part number 51464. It is a quarter inch three flute carbide coated end mill that you can see uh, photo rendering of. Uh, actually, I think that was our old job right there. It's kind of cool. Uh, right there. We're going to run that at 3300 and change and at 14.8 inches a minute. Pretty simple, we select our geometry and all we're gonna add is a finishing overlap so that way we don't have that gouge sort of mark where you start and stop, or in theory you don't. Click OK, that'll clean up the OD of the part. The next one is a 3D adaptive clearing. That's in the paid version of HSM, also in Fusion 360, and it is amazing. Same tool, same feeds and speeds as the prior op. We don't have to select any geometry and all we choose is some settings about step over and stock to leave a five thou and that's really it. You're just sort of some housekeeping type stuff. Click OK and you get this awesome tool path that steps down on different levels. Very cool. Remember though, adaptive is a roughing op. It's going to leave, the best way I can explain it is on an interpolated circle, it's going to leave faceted ridges. So we'll come in here with a 2D contour same tool, all we've got to do is pick that edge and that's going to clean that up. Now, one of the fun tricks in this cam lesson is we've only got a quarter inch spot mill drill. It's this tool right here, 51652 is the part number. Problem is we can't, we don't have enough surface area to actually run this chamfer, but we do. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go easy. We're going to use a flow op. So that's 3D milling flow. Super easy. Same tool. All we're going to do is pick those faces and then right here under uh, number of step overs, the more step overs, the finer the resolution or the water line or scalloping, whatever you want to call it. We're going to leave tooth out because we're still going to come back. Now, if you had a ball in the mill, you could do that here and perhaps even get a better result. But even if you want to leave one tool in, let's say you're out of room in your tool holder, you just don't want a tool changer, you just don't want to change tools, great way to help clean up that stock and get ready for uh, the next op when we go to actually uh, run that chamfer edge. Before we do that, we're going to clean out these pockets and we're going to do that same tool, same feeds and speeds. I'm just selecting that interior contour and then what we did was right clicked it, make pattern, and you choose the, uh, let's see here, go to circular, choose the circle, and do six of them. It's that easy. Now for that chamfer, I don't really want to run it all the way around because we're going to go relatively slow. So let's do this. All we've got to do is create that little segment there. Super easy. Let's do it real quick. Go back to sketch. We'll sketch a circle on this plane and choose circle, go find the center, and it'll snap to like so. And then we'll just go to the line tool. Actually, I'll start from the center. 
Click there, double click to keep the tool active. Click whoop, here and go back to zoom in so you don't get the wrong one, like so, and then trim the excess. Trim. Oh, now that's awesome. We did that. Looks like we did it wrong. So click OK. Exit sketch. Is it? It's this. Oh, that's what happened. Hold on. Okay, so that sketch looks like it's on the wrong plane. Don't worry about it. Edit sketch plane. Move it back up to here where we wanted it to be. I must have goofed. And let's edit that sketch. Finish it out. Trim. There we've got our little point. So all we've got to do, I love this, is 2D contour. We'll choose our chamfer end mill. We're going to run at 4,000 RPMs in 5 inches a minute. We'll choose that piece of geometry, that little sketch segment, and then what we'll do is we'll say multiple finishing passes. I want to come in with one basically roughing cut on it. Turn off stock to leave and click OK and you'll see that gives us our two cuts up at this height. We're in that same folder for the pattern so that's going to duplicate that six times all the way around the part so we're not spending a ton of time cutting air and then all I do is hit control D and I duplicate that here and choose chamfer offset of 0.2 inches and it moves it down along the chamfer. We do that yet again here and if we're cutting that chamfer in three depth of cut passes. How cool is that, right? Ideal? Maybe not, but guess what? You can make use of the tools you got, which I love. After that, we'll come in, we'll do the chamfer on this uh, ID edge there, same tool, same process, and then we'll switch to this tool number 46471, a one millimeter ball end mill, really tiny, and we'll do 2D trace and it's a super easy. I love how easy it is to pick the geometry here. We can actually clear it out. I'll just show you. It's so easy. We're going to trace the boxes and the characters, which you can do by just clicking in here. Look at that. All this is redone with just these few clicks. Yep. Boom. Seriously, just like that. Awesome. We're done. Let's head over to the machine, make some chips.
Well, here's the final part. Um, it, it turned out great with one exception, which is the, the darned um, chamfer lines didn't work out. What I ended up doing was sticking it in the lay, the Emco lay, then turning them down. Just, it didn't take much, but it definitely didn't work. And I had wanted to either make another one or run a test part and figure out why didn't that work? Because from a cam standpoint, it should. I think it was probably my fault on the software side. Unfortunately, with the move now happening, uh, I didn't have a chance to do that, and uh, I will I just have to do that when I get back. But I, I do think that's possible. I do think it's a really helpful thing to be able to cut bigger chamfers than the um, actual geometry or the real estate you've got on the edge of that tool. And, uh, yeah, so I'm really hoping there's a Wednesday widget next week. I'm not going to sacrifice quality just to put one out, but we are kind of uh, drinking out of a fire hose right now. So uh, we'll one day at a time, but as always, folks, I really appreciate the enthusiasm, thumbs up, comments, and shares, and I will see you again from a new shop. Take care.